Check, check. Breakout room three, check. Breakout room three, check, check. Hello. Hello. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, that's good. I just wanted to test my mic just to make sure it's clear. My name is um, Olushola Tanela. Check, check. Check, testing. Check, one, two. Hello. It's quite clear. Hello. Can you hear me? We got three. Can you hear me? Whatever. Can you hear me? Break out to room three. We would like to know if. Good. Thank you so much, Mr. Oh, That is why this thing is not working out. Yeah. Local government. If you have a local government, you can click account phone number and ask it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hello, Tenin, can you hear me? Hello, Tenin, can you hear me? Hello, Tenin, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Very good, okay. Um,
Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm the I'm the moderator for this session. I work with the Access Africa, the project of IT Media Group. Yeah, I and this does want to work to of inclusive development. Can you all hear me? Especially those of you that are online. Is the list there? Hello, sir. We can't hear you clearly, Remy. Can you hear us? Um, can you hear me? I can yes, hear you, sir. Can I hear you? Yeah. Okay, um, uh, uh, Mr. Remy, okay. I, I didn't cut um, one. Yeah. Up, but I can hear you, sir. I'm here, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, welcome. Can you hear us? Raising hand. He's on the receipts. He's. Uh, Okay, hey, just for the now. purposes of speaking. All right. Uh, thank you for the purposes of uh, introduction. My name once again is Remy Weke. I'm the lead consulting uh, strategist at Digital Sense Africa. Digital Sense Africa is a project of IT Realms Media Group that publishes uh, IT Realms Online, Niger Gronet, and uh, Digital Sense Business Magazine. I'll be moderating this uh, section. Um, as we all know, we'll be discussing internet as an enabler of inclusive development. Internet has significantly changed information management and business processes in Nigeria through improving communication systems and developing more user-friendly environments for information sharing. With the Nigerian National Broadband Plan 2020 to 2025, which embodies strategies that will accelerate broadband penetration to facilitate the growth of Nigerian digital economy, is expected that as the internet penetration increases, uh, we will achieve bulk of the things enlisted in the broadband plan. And the benefit of this can now be realized. However, the internet has the potential to achieve much more than economic needs. The potential of the internet to transform governance and its intricacies are currently under-emphasized. So how can Nigeria utilize ICT as a tool for economic recovery, improve national security, encourage public participation in governance, ensure efficient service delivery and enjoying innovation in policy and citizen services and ultimately improve the state of the nation. So this session aims to carefully consider the above from the view of multi-stakeholders in the Nigerian internet ecosystem. We believe that the, the issues we will discuss today and recommendations that will follow will also be shared among us, the stakeholders. So at this juncture, permit me also to welcome our panelists. I will start with uh, Mr. Teniola, who is the National Coordinator A4AI. Mr. Teniola, can you hear us? In Nigeria. We also have uh, Chukwemeke Fred Abata, who is the MD CEO 
Anambra State ICT Agency. Uh, we are expecting that uh, Mr. Igwe Kasmea will also join us. He's the head of information technology at Savicom Nigeria, as well as Tosi Abolaji, who is the program manager, Paradigm Initiative. As uh, we progress, we hope those who are not yet here will join, especially Tosi and uh, Igwe. So let me start with the those that are with us. We have had um, the intro I made with regards to the section. I would like to take your, your understanding on the, on the team for this section. What is your impact? Or what do you think is the impact of internet on, on, uh, on governance in Nigeria? Where are we? And uh, Mr. Ten. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay, sorry, I, I couldn't get the last bit of what you said, but I guess you want uh, me to kick off the panelist session uh, by um, giving an understanding of the thematic for today. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, Good, uh, uh, good afternoon to you all and uh, to my co-panelists. Uh, I'm Olushola Tenyola, the National Coordinator for the Alliance for Affordable Internet. And uh, we're very here to be part of this uh, breakout session uh, that focuses on um, a very uh, topical issue. Uh, and that issue really is something that is uh, dear to our hearts, internet as an enabler of inclusive development. Uh, at A4AI, we are currently now looking at meaningful connectivity towards active participatory, participatory digital societies. Uh, and when we talk about the internet access uh, and inc inclusivity or internet as an enabler, enabler for inc uh, digital inclusivity, uh, we look at the internet now from the, not from a basic connectivity point of view, but from a meaningful uh, connecti connectivity uh, point of view. And what is meaningful uh, connectivity? essentially states that you have to have at least a, a smartphone device. Uh, you have to have, always have a broadband connect, a connection uh, and you can access that broadband connection uh, 24 hours uh, per, per, per day. And obviously it has to be affordable. Um, so in our perspective, uh, digital literacy, uh, digital skills, in addition to the social environment, uh, including meaningful connectivity gives you meaningful uh, access. And that meaningful access plays very much into internet uh, inclusion. Uh, as you know, that uh, there is a huge uh, increase in terms of infrastructure deployments to support uh, broadband uh, initiatives uh, in Nigeria under the implementation of the Nigerian Broadband Plan of 2020 2025. However, there's obviously uh, a digital gap, and that digital gap is very much centered around the internet access gap. So you might have connectivity in certain areas, especially. Um, uh, coverage of wireless connectivity uh, in the unserved and underserved areas, but there's definitely uh, an internet usage gap where uh, those in those communities are not able to access or, uh, the internet because they are not able to a afford uh, a digital device, which is more like a, a smartphone device, and, and b uh, they can't afford the subscriptions uh, to access the internet uh, via uh, the tariffs that are out there. And then finally, there's the issue around digital literacy. Are they able to effectively use uh, the communication tools that they have? So at uh, A4AI, we're very much uh, focused on trying to not only increase the affordability from one to two, which is uh, one gigabyte usage per month for less than or equal to 2% GNI. And in Nigeria, that represents about 18,000 per month. 
uh, we will also want to increase it from two to five, uh, which is two gigs, uh, uh, sorry, uh, five gigabytes, beg your pardon, uh, for 2% of GNI by 2025. So those are the measures that we're trying to uh, adopt. And we believe that this uh, thematic uh, is very appropriate and uh, apt uh, for our objectives that we also pursue. So we're looking forward to a further dialogue. I thought I'd just give you the intro for now and allow other panelists to uh, contribute and also be guided by the questions that the moderator will pose to uh, unravel some of these uh, uh, very topical issues. Thank you very much. Ramin, hello. Uh, it sounds like he's gone off, though. Oh, he's gone off. Okay. Did you hear anything, CFA? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I heard everything you said. Okay, good. So I'm not too sure how he wants us to close I, it, but we, we might as well continue yeah, the dialogue. Especially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean. So I think uh, maybe I just leave a few words um, and wait for him to come around. Uh, but, you know, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is CFA, uh, uh, for short, Chukameka Fedek Bata. Uh, I currently lead the Anambra State ICT Agency. And, you know, uh, I'm excited about this topic uh, because um, even in sort of formulating the strategy for the agency, um, beyond every other thing, so yes, there's an aspect where we want to deal with e-governance and ensure that, you know, uh, we bring to light the e-government e um, expectation of the government uh, and make it uh, visible for the citizens uh, and also help to build the digital literacy and the digital skills gap. Uh, one other critical thing that we've said to ourselves is broadband. Like we just know that for one and two to work, we need broadband, we need internet. We need to make it affordable for the people. So it, it just tells us how instructive. Okay, I think uh, Remy is here back. Um, okay. Yes. Please, uh, uh, can you try to rewind a little? We lost you at the time. Oh, no. You, well, I think the people online heard it was you, though, your network there. But, but yeah. what, what I was saying is, uh, yes. Because so we I was are saying that, you know. Sorry, what did you say, sir? I said we are recording, so it's important that we get some okay, okay. Um, aspect of Okay, that. so. Okay, so I started by introducing myself. Uh, I lead the Anambra State ICT Agency. And I was saying that, you know, when I first got on board, um, it, it, was, it was trying to think through what would be the um, strategy for the agency. Uh, of course, we, we picked, we basically narrowed down to three things. One was e-government, trying to make e-government a reality, um, trying to ensure that we bring citizens, government services uh, closer and make it accessible to the people. Uh, the second one was around digital skills, digital literacy. How do we empower, you know, our people to be digitally literate and, and be ready for the skills of the 21st century? But then the third one now has to do with the topic of today, which is broadband, broadband, broadband. Um, if we want one and two to work, it means that citizens must have available, must have uh, access to uh, broadband, must have access to internet, right? And this is why uh, today's topic is very instructive because if we if they don't have access to internet, if we don't bridge digital divide, then it means that no matter what we do on one and two, whether it's e-government, whether it's making all the things possible, if people don't have devices and they don't have internet on those devices, they cannot access those things that we have built. So it means that for us, we have to fall back and say, okay, you know what? Let's find a way to, while we're doing one and two, let's find a way to make sure that three is on the front burner. And that's why today we're engaging with a lot of all the providers to see what are the ways that we can ensure that we make broadband available. And so this, this is also the case for across the country uh, without internet, right? And, you know, the boom, what we have seen in the startup ecosystem is because, you know, um, the, the government of Fashola sort of had the foresight and made it possible for uh, a company like Main One to bring uh, data and services available to make it available to Yaba and that sort of you know, engage the young people there. And today, the rest is history. And I think that if we can replicate this in across the country, you know, in various clusters, I think that it will be 
a very remarkable experience. One of the things we are pioneering in Anambra today is that we're also pioneering, in addition to what we're doing with uh, trying to do with broadband, is that we're also trying to pioneer and make public Wi-Fi access, accessible to certain uh, areas, public spaces, right? Let people have access to uh, the basic internet when they're in public, uh, particularly government-owned areas. We've looked at uh, general hospitals, universities, uh, and then we're looking for partners that make that a reality because we understand that if we are able to do this, it will naturally begin to spring up its own ecosystem. Uh, so I'll stop there for now, um, you know, without overlaboring the point that internet is life today and, you know, we must take it seriously. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, CFA. Um, uh, Denny, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, essentially, um, thank you, uh, CFA, uh, for your contributions. That was very uh, in line with what I started off uh, the conversation with. Essentially, it's, it's about affordability. I, I think that uh, one of the a number of research, and one of them that we've recently done is the fact that device uh, affordability is a great inhibitor to those uh, who would like to access the internet. I remember uh, the internet now has gone beyond just having a basic device, which is a 2G device in many cases in communities. It's really about a 3G, 4G device. And those are quite expensive to, to obtain for your average Nigerian. So we really need to look at uh, device affordability. Uh, and also, uh, how do we get uh, the infrastructure uh, that uh, CFA referred to, and there's a lot more that is coming to our shores of Lagos. How do we get that traffic to those communities that most need it at an affordable price? Again, it centers around affordability. Uh, and if we can actually address that question, uh, I think the second bit would be around digital uh, skills and digital literacy, uh, which I know that NIT uh, is looking at in terms of digital literacy, uh, but we also have to uh, try and break uh, the conundrum around uh, affordability of devices to access the internet and actually the, the tariffs that also applied in these uh, areas where there are significant gaps noted uh, in the country uh, to provide an inclusive uh, internet usage. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Tenny, for that uh, contribution. Um, uh, looking at the contribution so far, and uh, knowing fully well that in the next few months, less than five months or so, Nigeria will be going to 2023 general elections. Uh, given your understanding of the internet, what role do you think uh, public participation in governance and electoral engagements uh, could be leveraged on in terms of improving the processes? CFA. Hello. Sorry. Uh, please repeat said, the question, sir. Yeah, I said uh, looking at the contributions made so far, the participation of pub, uh, public participation is very key in governance. And uh, in the next few months, we will be heading to, to the polls for general elections. And um, I was asking, how can we improve on the process of electoral engagement using the internet, for instance, for public participation? Did you hear me? Oh, Hello, no, the internet over there is not helping. I don't know. Um, it's turning like I... it's breaking. We can but, hear you. Go ahead. No, no. Even your question, uh, uh, it's not clear. It's breaking at some point. But I know that I heard something about public, uh, public, uh, public participation in governance and the electoral engagement as we head closer to 2023 general election. How can uh, the processes be improved using the internet? internet? Uh, well, um, okay, so I think that maybe from the citizen side, you know, uh, because if it's on the government side, I, 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 I don't know whether it's not late in the day um, for, for, for what needs to be done uh, because it starts, it, there's the whole process involved. 
But I think from the citizen side, it's really what is already happening. You know, citizens, um, you know, stepping up to understand that, yes, you know, whatever is done in the digital space uh, should also be translated to, to, to reality. Uh, the government side, because, you know, um, you know, um, um, Mr. Tenena just made a point now where, you know, devices are very important. Uh, if, if, if people don't have devices, then they, they cannot access uh, the internet. They cannot use these services, right? Um, even on the election day, right? If infrastructure is not in certain places, it means that, you know, and, and, and I, I think I read, I'm not sure if INEC would be using uh, digital trans, you know, they won't be using digital trans this time around. So there's a whole lot more that needs to, to go into that. It's all about building infrastructure, right? How do you ensure that for real, uh, the same quality of service, you know, that people experience in the city center is the same quality of service that people experience, you know, outside the city center, you know, um, picking up this appointment and leaving Lagos and moving uh, to Anambra State tells me how expensive. I mean, um, you know, uh, in Lagos, I used to, I, I pay for 200 meg and I pay somewhere around 99,000 for 200 meg on IPNX. Um, in, in Anambra State, uh, a 10 meg dedicated is about 250,000 naira per month. You know, so the disparity alone just tells me that, you know, um, the DSM, if you cannot make do with the regular telco, uh, services, you know, it, it's just very expensive for you to have any kind of dedicated link, right? Even the one that we have now that we're using, it costs, it's a, it's a whole deal, a whole lot of money for, for the 45 for the meg that we're using now at the ICT agency. So the infrastructure is very important that the government, you know, um, work with the providers to ensure that this infrastructure uh, can, which should be improved on, and which leads to the question that T asked about right of way, you know, um, uh, unfortunately, I, 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 my, my first background, my first work background was in telecoms. And I know what, you know, telecom providers face uh, in terms of even the personnel that they have. Uh, a lot of times, you know, local governments and state government, and government in general just see telecoms as a way to make money, right? I'm happy to report that Anambra state has waived the right of way. And I think that more states need to work on a waiving that right of way, you know, um, where the money would be are the other services that you can layer on the content services, the, the digital businesses, the digital skills, the, the people who will do the gig economy and pay taxes in your state, right? So these are part of the things that we need to sort of work with government um, to understand and government at all levels now, because most times the thing is of the federal government, you know, the state and the, and the, and the, and the uh, local governments also have roles to play. And the role is that we need to encourage uh, the telecom, and work with the telecom provider. I understand that, you know, the one tax that you collect today doesn't mean it ends it all, right? There are many more taxes you can get on the add-on services that would come from it. Um, I'll stop here. I hope you answered the question somehow. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, Tenny, do you have a comment on that? Um, sorry, I've kept my camera off. I just want to make sure you can clearly hear me without um, jitter or anything like that. Um, I, I think from an A4 AI perspe per 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 perspective, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's early, early in the afternoon. Um, it's really important to note that a, a dialogue has to be had with the, par uh, the parliamentarians, um, those in the, um, in the National Assembly, uh, so that there is a level of engagement as to the awareness of the use of in internet by in their, within their communities. And that discussion should really highlight around uh, the, the, the need to remove taxes on or any form of taxes on anything that has to do with internet, uh, accessing the internet. So we really need to see uh, policymakers um, actually advancing affordable and meaningful connectivity. Uh, there is definitely a, a need to support uh, the national broadband plan uh, uh, to address uh, digital gender gaps and also to encourage healthy competition uh, between these different service providers. I note the issue around rights of waste. That's still a conundrum. And I obviously congratulate the number of state government for actually uh, reducing or slashing their rights of waste per linear, per linear meter. Uh, but what you find is that the, not all states are bought into the issue of rights of waste. So we still have uh, barriers to infrastructure sharing in terms of costing. Uh, and we need to ensure that rights of ways are addressed uh, and that infrastructure infrastructure sharing policies and regulations are uh, uh, accelerated. Um, and then there should be a certain awareness, again, from uh, our legislators to ensure that their communities are aware of what the internet can do uh, in terms of awareness, that's uh, electoral awareness, 
uh, to their communities. Uh, and secondly, uh, the rights of the citizens in terms of uh, how they can vote. Uh, this is more of a dissemination of information from governments, from the local, from the local governments uh, and the state government, for instance. Uh, and then from uh, a private sector point of view, it, we obviously, in terms of uh, the sector, just need to ensure that we have a con continuous collaboration and dialogue to address some of these burning issues around rights of ways uh, and definitely costs, uh, those input costs that uh, creates a, a, a divide in between the cost of land in capacity in Lagos and actually transporting it to places like Anambra State, for instance, or even further into the northern states of Nigeria, where you see there's a disparity, not only in terms of speed, speed but in terms of data uh, usage and the price per gig that, that gets increased as you move further away from Lagos. So that's still an issue, has been issues uh, from uh, a very early start in the, the creation of the industry, but it needs to be resolved quickly. Otherwise, you will not be able to uh, create these uh, platforms that will be required by the communities at an affordable uh, and easily accessible price, uh, as we've already highlighted. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, um, you mentioned the uh, uh, issue around uh, digital literacy and um, seeing that as a tool for national development vis-a-vis uh, -vis internet and public opinion. How can we improve on those digital literacy so as to improve the likes of uh, uh, voters' apathy or in yeah, improve the process that militates against uh, voters when it comes to public participation. Can you share more light on that, Tenny? Yeah, thanks again, uh, moderator, uh, my brother, Renny. Um, I think that, uh, and I obviously maybe don't speak for FYI now because we really don't have enough evidence or research that supports uh, the the hypothesis that there's an interconnection between voter apathy and digital literacy. Uh, the first thing we want to state is that the level of digital literacy is still low uh, in the country, and it's not just unique to Nigeria, it's across the countries of focus that we uh, are engaged in. Uh, uh, but is that a bad thing? No, it's a start, and it gives us as a country an opportunity to improve on that. And I think that um, there's an organ of governments uh, right now looking at it but there's both the i think the ministry of education and nitda for instance are looking at how they can actually a define what we mean by digital literacy uh, in terms of it's, if it's just basic uh, digital literacy or um uh, i would say base case digital literacy and therefore and, and also an advanced digital literacy i mean once we can get that and that's really long-term view so really the lecture is just around the corner it was six to seven months away um that won't solve that the, 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 the i think the question that you're posing so i would say it's still work in progress but uh if we were to speak to the digital literacy issue in greater detail the one thing that we would need to do and address is to ensure that there's definitely more greater awareness around uh what we mean by digital literacy and then there should be an engagement uh, whether we're using um, science, science, mathematics, uh, arts, and um, uh, engineering and technology to, uh, to be uh, adopted in the curricula for, for our youth and those that are still in um, primary uh, school or secondary school to actually start to adopt some form of literacy. But from, through to the wider population, I think that it's really through awareness, retraining, reskilling, and retooling. Uh, and that won't be done before the the, the uh, elections that will be that will be holding in 2023. What the best we can do is to obviously, as I state and I repeat here, is to engage uh, legislators to see how they can actually diffuse uh, the internet um, awareness, and that's the usage of internet to improve uh, uh, voter education uh, and voter engagement in the process that we have right now uh, with uh, INEC. That's the best I think that we can do in the six months and then look towards maybe another four years where we can start to improve from the bottom up, uh, the digital literacy uh, percentage and, uh, and those that are more digital literate uh, by, 20, by the next election cycle. That will be four years or from 2020 to 2023. Thank you. Uh, thank you. CFA, 
Hello, Siefe. Hello, Siefe. Yes, sir. It's true, I'm because still online. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, I am. Uh, 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 did you get my question? Yeah. yeah. Do you have uh, confusions to me there with regards to digital literacy? Are you people doing anything uh, around that uh, periphery in uh, Anambra? If you are doing something around it, you can share with us in terms of improving uh, digital literacy for an improved uh, voters' education. For instance, uh, well, so so generally, we, we there are plans there are uh, plans that uh, our agency is working on to ensure that we build uh, digital skills uh, as a as a strong focal point of the government. Uh, even the governor in his manifesto uh, talked about building an Anambra digital tribe, and so that is something that is. Um, uh, in the works now, and you know, and, and, and hopefully that would go out soon. Uh, the whole idea is, you know, um, of course, the focus of the agency isn't necessarily on voters; it's more on the general public. And it is how do we ensure we build the right kind of skills and prepare young people for uh, the, um, the realities of the 21st century. And those realities include the fact that you know, working at home is a culture; is the fact that you can stay anywhere uh, in any part of Anambra, for example, and still have clients across the world. You know, uh, Also the fact that a market woman can actually have basic devices to do a uh, certain kind of, um, <clears throat> certain kind of um, tech related um, transactions. So yeah, um, there's a lot of work that's going on there, but I think that uh, uh, Mr. Teniola covered it uh, extensively. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, moving forward, uh, I would like to take a few recommendations from you, uh, you both, um, giving the understanding that uh, in, uh, the role of the internet, uh, what should be your recommendation for us looking at the subject matter we just treated, what should be done both by the government and by the, the stakeholders. Uh, can you take, have a take on that? Hello, CFA. Hello, CFA. Okay, Tenny, are you, are you there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, uh, I was asking what could be your recommendations uh, as a stakeholder now, given the, the subject we have addressed today with regards to internet as an enabler of inclusive development, what could be your recommendation to the stakeholders themselves, the private sector and the, the government? Yeah, thanks for that. And I think that um, generally for A4AI, it's, it's around continuous dialogue and collaboration. And those areas of collaboration and dialogue still needs to be continued. I don't. I think we're just at the beginning of the road right now. Uh, and it's uh, we're gonna be very exciting going forward. And those areas, may I just highlight, are sort of areas I pointed to earlier in our conversations, but I want to reiterate just for emphasis. I think that uh, in each of the countries that we are focused on, there's definitely a recognition that the, the Nigerian broadband plan, for instance, or the national broadband plan, is something that is viewed as a benchmark. And it's a benchmark for addressing the digital gender gap. And that's very evident in all the countries that we've uh, uh, been involved in, in terms of this very topical uh, subject matter. Uh, and I think that needs to be uh, well recognized that yes, we have a Nigerian broadband plan in place. It's really about how do we implement and ensure that we, when we review it, that the, the, the issues that focus on digital literacy uh, and the infrastructure gaps that have been identified are addressed. And then secondly, um, that we continue to have healthy competition between the different service providers. If we don't uh, consider those that are in the unserved and underserved parts of the country, and I think the last count we had 
uh, and I think it was referenced by NCC's EBC, is that we have about 30 to 33 million Nigerians that have never accessed the internet. And, and I think may not even have a chance to access the internet if they're cluster gaps. And I think the cluster gaps has reduced from 192 at one stage to 114 to now 92 cluster gaps. If we don't adopt innovative technology, innovative technology that's cent centered around TV white space, uh, innovative technology that uses a uh, cheaper or free spectrum, uh, innovative technology that adopts low cost solutions and not just relying on the mobile network operators infrastructure. And that includes the government's recognizing that they need to start to put in place a framework for community networks, or there needs to be a place for community networks. Um, that, you know, then uh, the competition will not be there and those gaps will remain. Uh, then thirdly, infrastructure sharing policies, which I highlighted earlier, needs to be really um, enhanced, enhanced and ensured that they are put in place to ensure that the cost of delivering services is drastically reduced. Uh, and I think that's, obviously is, is, is a very important uh, point we would like to make, considering the current economic uh, situation we find ourselves post-COVID-19. And then finally, it's around smart taxation. We need to really look at the fact that uh, government does need money, but we can't basically uh, kill the cow that's, or the, the goose that's in the golden egg. We have to ensure that telecoms is not just viewed as a cash cow, uh, but we ensure that any taxes that are applied are smart so that they are not pushed onto consumers and raises the cost of providing uh, services, not decreasing. And therefore, in, in, uh, let's, say, let's put it this way, uh, not making the affordability arguments uh, any better. It will probably throw more people who won't be able to afford the basic services, let alone meaningful uh, connectivity uh, out of uh, any of these digital um, inclusive debates. So the issues, again, affordability, accessibility and availability are very pertinent uh, to uh, actually making sure that if those recommendations are put in place that we will stand a chance of addressing some of these uh, very uh, challenging uh, and difficult uh, issues. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tenny, for that, uh, those recommendations. I remember you as a former president of ATCON. Um, uh, I think, you, do you have anything to share with us with regards to what uh, some of the things you did while uh, presiding over ATCON with regards to inclusive uh, development? I think that um, that's a good question, uh, Rene, and uh, that was almost uh, four, six years ago now uh, when I yeah. took on the presidency of ADCON. So things have changed dramatically. There wasn't COVID-19 then, but I think one of the, well, the main issues, and I think is a constant one, is the rights of ways. <laughs> rights of ways is, 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 is a big one, and I think that's something that we really pressed on. And I think the multiple taxation issue, I think that's it's a topical issue right still right now as I speak to you. Um, so... Uh, those two areas are, are really um, ones that we need to overcome in uh, the country. Otherwise, what you find is that uh, cost of laying out infrastructure, cost of delivering services will only increase. I think that seems to be a concern, even by our Honourable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, who had to intervene on the recent excise duty of 5% that was due to be imposed and may still be imposed on the telecommunications uh, sector, and which will, um, unfortunately, it will be a tax passed on to the consumers. And once that happens, or if it happens, you can see that the, the affordability index will be impacted. That's an ADI indicator that AFYI now measures, and I'm obviously heading up the national coordinator for Nigeria. So you tend to find that those elephants in the room need to be really addressed. We can't just kick it down the road thinking that it will go away. So I, I think uh, when I was at president, those are the two real issues that really sprung out for me and are still issues. It's around multiple taxation, rights of ways not being addressed. Uh, and I think those are issues that we need to address going forward. Otherwise, you tend to find that even 5G, uh, 6G and other innovative technologies will also be uh, patchy in terms of its deployment around the country because they will only go for profit driven uh, areas where they can get the return on investments. Thank you. All right, uh, talking about 
about uh, the taxation, uh, which um, happens to be suspended, is there if for AI part of the current uh, negotiation, or are you part of those sitting around the table to discuss the affordability and then the, especially with regards to the taxation that has been suspended? Are you people taking part in that? No, I, I can tell you, uh, Rene and my uh, moderator, we as A4AI, we, uh, uh, we give uh, policy advice, uh, we present research uh, data, uh, you know, and give evidential uh, um, case studies and best practices. We do, we're not involved in the negotiation uh, of this, I think that's left to each government uh, to, to address. And in the case of Nigeria, it's the Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy that's driving that. As you know, he has a committee or set up a committee to try and resolve this issue. Um, we are always available to uh, provide uh, information, uh, data, and empirical research and evidence. Uh, if anyone wants to look, visit our website, www.a4ai.org, you'll find some information uh, centered around uh, taxation, uh, best practices, uh, to ensure that uh, engagement, advocacy, and research around uh, inclusive internet and definitely meaningful connectivity is continued across the countries or, or where we have focus. But again, short answer to your question is no, we're not involved in the negotiation, uh, but we are always available to be engaged in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, the internet remains affordable to your average Nigerian uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, CFA. Uh, Hello, CFA. Yes, I'm here. Hello, CFA. Yeah, um, I'm here. We we have spoken. Yeah, we have spoken on a number of uh, issues, and I would like to just have, have uh, uh, some recommendations from you with regards to utilizing the internet to tackle political and uh, uh, voter party. Uh, probably create employment and improve service delivery for Nigerian netizens. Um, Do you have some okay. recommendations to share with us? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes. So I'll make it briefly because I'm a, a, on the road, just brief. Uh, I'll say that, you know, infrastructure is very critical. I know that uh, Mr. Tetelela mentioned that uh, infrastructure, uh, we need to ensure that, you know, we build out more into the hinterlands. And then we need to also ensure that we create a healthy culture, which he has said. And I think one final one I would say is the, is the devices, right? There has to be a way where there has to be some sort of made in Nigeria kind of devices, right? Because right now devices are very, very expensive that people cannot afford, afford, afford it, right? So we need to find a way to work with, you know, whatever, you know, attract and make sure that the plant is here, that devices are made out of here. That would drive the cost down uh, drastically. I believe that, you know, these recommendations would help a lot in making that, sure that internet is no, available. Hello. Hello, CFA. Yeah, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, CFA. Hello. I can hear I, you. I, I think that. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so basically, yeah. Yeah, so I think that this recommendation will help in relation to, you know, what I just been said earlier. In helping, you know, not just uh, for, vo for voters or for voting alone or elections, but also yeah. generally to just help build the economy and give more people access to internet, uh, create more digital jobs, and you know, try and you know ultimately retain some of the value that you know big tech, you know, move out of this country and try and retain this value here, you know, generally. Uh, that's that's my contribution. But I don't know whether uh, it is back. Okay. Thank you. Um... Thank you, CFA, for that contribution, even though we lost some part of it. But then uh, we know you made mention of uh, building infrastructure and uh, making sure it works. I would like you to probably uh, share your thought with regards to uh, how do we ensure fairness create all groups to ensure that the economy of scale is brought to bear 
you know, because there are some people that are marginalized economically, some are socially, and some are also politically. Uh, I would like to get your thoughts on that. Hello. Hello, CFA. Okay. Tenny, are you with us? I am with you, and I'm trying to understand the question. Um, okay. How do we ensure equity fairness of these two policies? Because if you look at it uh, realistically, those being marginalized often don't even sit on the table where the policies are made. So how do we ensure that equity and fairness is bring to bear on uh, these two policies, policies that probably government uh, shuns out or introduces to ensure that the marginalized group or underserved group, so to say, uh, encourage to utilize technology, especially the internet. I think, and this is this is something that um, has always been uh, sort of an Achilles heel uh, when you're trying to develop policies, is how do you make it all inclusive? Um, well, it just requires further engagement. I, I think policies shouldn't be rushed. They should be um, fully inclusive. Uh, so that means that you capture um, the wider communities. And I think uh, engaging CSOs, uh, NGOs and other government organizations that are trying to address digital inclusion. I know of one, and I don't want to use this platform uh, to throw out government names, but there are other government organizations that have come into Nigeria that are looking to address this issue that you've just raised. Uh, and they, they are looking to go into those communities where their voices are not heard. And I think government, our government needs to engage either those into government organizations or actually do the same thing that these government organizations to understand the needs of those that are in the very, very, very rural areas of this country, which are represents the un and underserved parts of, of, of the country. And then have a dialogue, really, essentially. That dialogue, uh, they can get the needs analysis, they can basically get the requirements and then find out how they can get buy-in for these communities to ensure that they're being carried along along this journey. It's a digital journey. It's not just about the, uh, uh, the urbans uh, of haves or those that are on the peripherals of have-nots, but it's definitely a journey. And I think that is the bit that I think we need to emphasize on in this digital economy uh, journey. We need further communicative messaging going out right from the highest echelons in Abuja, sprinkled all the way through to the ministries. I think they now have digital economy ministries in the sta at the state level. And then from the state level, that um, messaging is percolated down to the local government area level. And then there should be a bottom-up approach as well, where uh, the ideas, the talents, the information and knowledge that it resides in those communities uh, is captured and then it's trickled up so that you have a all inclusive policy, uh, not in a policy that's just been adopted uh, uh, from a foreign partner that is trying to be uh, shoehorned into uh, our very idiosyncratic uh, multicultural, multidimensional society. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Is CFA still with us? Is he still with us? Because we can't hear him. Then is Tosi, is he on, online? And Kasmina too, none. Okay, so we may have to, thank you, uh, Tenny, for that response. Well appreciated. We have to continuously dialogue and uh, engage. That's very thoughtful of you. Uh, we now uh, open the floor for those who may wish to make contributions, uh, as well as uh, if you have questions, you can let us know so that we take those questions. Will anybody like to make contribution? Anyone here? Those who are joining us who are online, if you want to make contributions, please raise your hand. Oh, you have a question? Sorry, you have an alternate mic? You, yeah. 
if you are making contribution, you say you are making contribution. If you are asking question, you ask question. But before then, please introduce yourself, your name, your organization you represent, if any. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Oluwada Mlola Mogwale. Uh, I am with Trade Lender. Uh, Trade Lender is a digital firm, uh, where finance firm, where we give loans to SMEs. Now, my question is, we meet some of these SMEs we, in the open market, and one of the challenges most of them have is the fact that we are talking about digital, whereby they have to use a smartphone or a laptop to access these finances that we're talking about. Now, the idea is for, for us to help them to access credits for their uh, but for their businesses, but they need to register on our platform. And it's challenging for most of them to actually do this. So what have we doing in, uh, as, regards, as regards this? And I think um, Mr. Teniola said something about literacy. And I think Digital this literacy. is actually very rampant, very, uh, very obvious in most of these SMEs, especially the women on the market and some of this. So what are we doing to bridge this gap? Because the world is going digital now. So how do we uh, solve this question, especially it affects our economy in a way. So how do we resolve this? That's my question. Okay, thank you. Uh, then, did you get the question? Hello? Yes, I, I got the question. Sorry, uh, moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, I got the question, you, yes. Do you like to take that or do we take another question before you respond? Um, could, you, could you take another question as well? Okay. Thank you. There's a person. I have a question. Yours is a contribution. Okay. Can we go online and maybe come back to you? All right. We have someone raising hand there. Love what? Love day. And okay. uh, Sunday. Can we take up day? Okay. You say your name... Organization you represent, if you have a title, they are fine. Okay, my name Go is ahead. Love. Okay, my good afternoon. My name is Love Day. Um, my question is how do we advance digital economy when the capacity building space is heavily affected by poor power supply in the country? Take that again. Say power, su power supply. How do we advance the digital economy when the capacity building space is heavily affected by poor power supply in the country? I don't know if you understand my question. Okay. Uh, Tony, did you get that question? Yes, I think that um, Love Day uh, was asking uh, how do we build uh, capacity, uh, for for, yeah, capacity for digital economy when uh, there's a huge impact by poor power supply. Uh, well, yes. well, the obvious question, the obvious answer would be to fix the power supply. But we all know in this room uh, <laughs> that power is, is, is a very big issue in Nigeria, i.e. the supply of power, continuous power. Um, so there are different um, organizations looking at renewable energy, uh, alternative solutions, hybrid solutions, uh, you name you name it. The, all these require huge funding uh, and they are uh, heavily capex intensive uh, projects, uh, in my opinion. Um, so yes, I think people understand their solutions to some of the problems uh, Love Day. Uh, the issue is by when, when will these be in place? Uh, ideally, they should have been in place by now, but the reality is that they are not. So there's a, there's a level of a realism where we have to probably accept that there will be innovative or uh, patch mill type solutions that are reactive to our current day reality. The digital economy will not suffice unless we have uh, the power issue resolved. We, and that's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the big conundrum. Um, but it's something that's been recognized. Uh, the Nigerian board plan plan uh, doesn't make mention of it to a degree because it's been... Uh, well, it's outside the scope of the Nigerian broadband plan. There's an assumption that uh, the power uh, situation that we face in Nigeria will eventually be resolved. But the big question is by when? And when will these new, new, um, new renewable energy, alternative renewable energy solutions and other means of actually powering 
devices, even handsets to charge handset devices that are common to play at an affordable price. I know there's some players that are coming to the market that are trying to address it uh, or this issue, but again, it's just about economies of scale. Thank you. Second, the second question or was the first question, but I'm answering it secondly. Uh, thank you. First, you. Qu first question was trade, trade lender. I think uh, digital literacy she mentioned about digital literacy apathy or uh, very low digital literacy amongst the SMEs. The, I agree uh, by her observations. It's something that we've observed in AFOAI that, and in fact, there's a gender gap, a digital literacy gender gap that we're trying to address. The um, Global System for Mobile Association, GSMA, that covers all mobile network operators uh, in the world, has also just recently done a, a, a study. Uh, and that study, uh, I don't have uh, in, my, in my hands, but I, I'm sure that we can reference, uh, reference it, uh, speaks to some of the issues to do with not only digital skills, uh, but also uh, the, the area around um, the gender, gender divide. Uh, and this is uh, an, an area that we in Nigeria need to take seriously. I know that the National Social Investment Programs for Digital Access will be taking this uh, on board uh, alongside the uh, Ministry of Humanitarian um, Disaster, uh, I think, uh, Ministry. So they need to really, I think, again, work with the GSMA, work with um, the Broadband Implementation Steering Committee that's steering the implementation of the broadband plan and other stakeholders, maybe like yourself, to uh, see how we can uh, improve digital literacy amongst those in the SME segment uh, and more importantly, uh, uh, reduce the gender gap that exists in between male and females who are going on, on, onto the internet. And it's something that A4AI is also keen on. And I think, again, if you go to our website, a4ai.org, you might uh, find some further information that might uh, you might be able to refer to in terms of uh, the issues surrounding gender digital uh, divide. Thank you. Thank you, Denny, for those responses. Can we take take a now? Your name, your organization, title, if you have one. Good afternoon, all. My Good name afternoon. is Bella Akagba. I'm the founder of Bella Foundation for Child and Maternal Care, a non-government organization. We actually work to improve health and development of children, youth, and women. And we also uh, work uh, to see how we can mainstream the issue of internet in the, a lot of issues affecting uh, women and children. Then I'm also a fellow of Nigeria School on Internet Governance 2021, that's called two. My contribution is on how to ensure equity and fairness. Yes. Yes, I think uh, my, what I want to add is that we need to have the uh, input of various groups because in developing most of these policies, some people just sit down somewhere, develop policies and want people to implement po those policies. So once a situation where there should be input from various groups, but the needs of someone living with disability is different from the needs of a youth who is normal or a woman. So we want input from different groups so that if there's input in, different, in, in, in drafting this policy, the different groups are, have their inputs into these policies. I think it will also help. Then another uh, contribution is in terms of our uh, digital literacy, I want to recommend that we should do more of awareness and sensitization in various schools, churches, mosques, and that's what my organization is also doing. Do, uh, Every meeting with young people, we all made them to understand of the, the need for them to, uh, to use the internet uh, effectively. Because one thing is to use the internet and thing to use it in a positive way. Yes. Because young people are not using the internet in a positive way. And it's having a negative influence on, 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 young, on our youth and other people. So that's my contribution. Right. Thank you, Benga. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I think you may have to join A for AI. They also have a similar policy uh, framework. So that will also help in strengthening your own understanding of uh, how to use internet to work in that line. Um, we have another person there, was not Harrison. Harrison, I know her. Please, can we take Harrison, please? All right. So take note. Good afternoon, everybody. The, yeah, that you gave. Good afternoon, and, uh, everybody. Good afternoon, Harrison. What do you have yeah, to say? My name, is, my name is Harrison. I have a um, question, two questions. I'm from I Anambra State ICT Agency. So, um, yeah, the first question um, 
we've talked uh, about um, in improving electoral participation using the internet. Now, my question is, after increasing the participation using the internet, do we also ensure that credibility is achieved during elections using internet? Because one thing is to vote, and another thing is to ensure that the right thing is done with these votes. So how do we ensure to drive it using the internet as well? Again, just like the last speaker said, I want to ask them, um, is there a positive use of, use of internet program for the youth? Because according to her, there's a lot of wrong use of internet. The youth are making the use of internet in the wrong way. Is there a particular um, orientation that is channeled, um, targeted at the youth, at the upcoming ones, you know, trying to let them know how they can use the internet positively so that we can begin to turn around the activities of these youth and then channel them to more positive um, actions. So these are my two questions. Okay, thank you, Harrison. Uh, very briefly, one of the, I work with Digital Sense Africa. We annually organize a program called Nigeria Digital Sense Forum uh, on Internet Governance for Development. One of the key uh, roles there, or why it was initiated, is the focus on youth, especially those at the secondary school level, and those who are, and those who are, are graduating in like JSS3, to engage them and encourage them by sharing some insights on how to use internet positively. So you may also have to follow us and the other organizations that do pockets of internet engagement and advocacy. Uh, Digital Sense Africa is actually an at-large structure uh, uh, from the ICANN end. So we do that annually. And that's why we are also a member of MAG, that's uh, NIGF MAG, up to date from 2012. So um, at this point, I. I Tenny, I don't know if you would like to make a final statement as we wrap up. Hello, Tenny. Is CFA still with us? Is Tenny still online? Yeah. Hello, Tenny. I'm also here. Yes. Yeah, just your final statement because we are wrapping up. Uh, one minute or less than that. I'm also here on the subject matter, what would be your advice to Nigerians using the internet as a enabler for inclusive development? Very quickly. Hello, sir. Is he speaking? Somebody sent something there. Can you read it? The truth is that the internet is becoming a norm. It, it, um, the truth is that the internet is becoming a norm in Nigeria. And if the stakeholders can help us seize the boosting, if this fiber backhaul a lot, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Who is speaking? That's CFA. Is that CFA? Yes, yes, yes. I'm the one speaking. Yes, I'm the one speaking. CFA. I'm, I'm okay. I am... Yes, I'm speaking. Okay. Just your so, final thought subject, please. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. So the infrastructure is still a challenge. We're on the highway. We're struggling with internet. But uh, I would say that, you know, um, the infrastructure bit is something we cannot um, overemphasize. It, it has to be, you know, something that we need to collectively do. How do we ensure that the cost also, you know, it's not arbitrary when you move from Lagos into other parts of the country. Uh, it's something that gov governments have to collectively fix. Uh, it's a challenge, you know. Um, I can say that, you know, the cost is actual out of Lagos is actually prohibitive for any business. You know, it, it, you just it's just too expensive. Um, so that's very critical. And then also we need to wrap up digital skills, uh, begin to ensure that more citizens have access to uh, internet. 
understand what to do with it. Having access is one thing, but then understanding what to do with it is another thing. Uh, yeah. We must be able to show our citizens all the skills and possibilities that are available on the internet. And hopefully, you know, we can allow them, help them, particularly the young ones, to create more businesses and in turn employ more people. Uh, that's our focus at Anambra State Ice Agency. And hopefully, you know, that should be the focus across the country. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, CFA. Uh, Daniela. Hello. Yes. One My minute, final thought, please. Final thought, please. Is Sonny want to, does he want to speak? Uh, you mean Sunday for Lion? I think he's using CFA. CFA is using yeah, CFA. they're together. I think they're together. I think oh, they're okay. together. Okay, okay. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I think that it's all about engagement. Um, we need to continuously have dialogues, uh, workshops, uh, things that really uh, speaks more to this uh, session. Um, I think that we need more than an hour to cover some of these very uh, intrinsic issues. So we really look forward to, as if we are being part of that dialogue going forward. Uh, and then finally, um, really engaging the youth in worthwhile programs and projects is very important indeed. Uh, again, so I reiterate what uh, CFA has stated in terms of uh, in engagement. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, uh, Tenny, for your time and the contributions. We also want to thank uh, CFA for joining us as well from Anambra State. Uh, we wish to thank all the participants who joined us online, as well as those who are here in the house. We thank you very much and they hope to see you next time to join sessions for NIGF. We believe that uh, what we shared here will also impact on us. Please, uh, we are wrapping up on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lunch. So let's have the high level panel right. Ah, my professor. I'm sure to smile, sir. Okay, so um, we're just trying to look for the best uh, way to satisfy us all, okay? And that's why we're, we're keeping to time, strictly to time. However, uh, if, I'm, if I can't confirm that all the other speakers are here, then we'll then do lunch. But if they are here, we do it, and then you can have time to crack your bones because... I'll come back and hold you again. And I don't want to do that this time. I want to be able to sit down and eat whatever it is 
uh, that is sumptuously waiting for you out there. Um, at this time, I want to thank everybody for attending this very, very important event. And I hope we all got some level of education. I hope our speakers did well. I'm going to um, ask the organizers to give us further um, facts on their website so that even if time has not been able to, if our time has not been enough for you to be able to fully uh, express yourself, we can